Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is George and I hope this video makes you well. Today we are discussing a couple of people that you might not have heard before but I guess if you're Nigerian watching me, one name might actually stand out in the list of people that are going to be more, like, more of like analyzed in this video. One is Apostle Michael Oropo, the other one is Evident Shari. Um, the significant person actually here is J. Israel and then I'm going to mention a couple of other things as we go on in the video. In case you are interested in this and many more, stick around after the intro. Welcome back once again. Yeah, um, I've made a couple of videos recently um, which I think have been opening people's eyes to things that or the things the way I see things right here on social media as I get to discuss them. I've been getting a lot of messages of people telling me, ah, George, what kind of brain do you have? Blah, blah, blah. I'm not any different from you. When I look at these things, I give an informed opinion about them as I show you the way I think as I'm looking at them. So please, defending champions and the touched on my anointed gang, please make sure you use the comment wall because I love to read your messages, I must tell you, okay? But looking at the main subjects of today's video, now I, I, I came on Facebook recently, if you have not known, if you're watching me on YouTube, I've been kind of like a little bit active on Facebook recently, so I get to post a lot of political content and all that on Facebook to also sensitize people on, you know, why they need to get their PVC and be part of in the upcoming elections to decide who's going to be the next Nigerian president and all of those things, okay? But looking at the person of um, Apostle Michael Oropo, now, he's one person that is also just like Apostle Joshua Solomon. If you watch the last video I made, this video where I was continuing from the video I made on my other backup page george vlogs discussing the person of apostle joshua sermon his connection with kobus and how kobus is connected to tb joshua it was a very extensive well explained video so i made a continuation video right here on being real george which is this video in the in this in in a video i played here where apostle joshua sermon was preaching and talking about you know how kenneth copeland is uh one that should be credited for the whole faith movement and Benny Hain for healing and a couple of things. Okay, that particular program, the person that handed over the mic to him was um, Michael Oropo. And before he started from the point of which I I played the video for you, um, they kind of like have a good relationship. So it was Michael Oropo that handed over the mic to Apostle Joseph Sermon. And to a great extent, um, from the channel I watched it from, Apostle um, Michael Oropo, Apostle Joshua Sermon, and Apostle Erum Osai are more of like seen as, you know, the key people, or what I say, in Nigeria that have um, a particular consolidated idea or seem to be of the same spirit or the same, uh, what am I going to put it, relationship when it comes to the apostolic movement or the apostolic ministry, quotes and unquote. Okay, so I like to look at these people in consolidation, you understand? So do you also be hearing about what Apostle Romosai would had said in the past that I think would be an advice for the person of Apostle Michael Oropo if he's watching me right now or if you are watching me there's an advice for you but moving on um, I saw a video right here on Facebook of Jay Israel making an exposition about someone that he knows too well evidence or prophet evidence chari now I'm not gonna go into the whole background of him which I'm gonna play the video for you but in that video he mentioned someone who happens to be Evidence Chari's spiritual so father. Evidence if you're watching Chari me from Sarah. betrayed Makandewa. Evidence Chari was leaking information to me about Emmanuel Makandewa and his pastors and all his other sons. Most of the exposure that I was running, all that information, I was getting it from Evidence Chari and I exposed it. Soon after I exposed it, Emmanuel Makandewa ran a crusade he did a big broadcast saying to people that i'm sorry i deceived you of which he did not even apologize on the broadcast which i believe he changed his mind on the last minute and decided rather to divert his attention to this prodigal son called evidence chari what he has done now is to destroy evidence chari once and for all how do you think evidence here is going to survive in botswana as young as he is as irrelevant as he is when makandiwa puts his closest pastor in the same territory that evidence child is trying to launch a ministry do you see how i've how we strike imbalances in these occultic ministries and how we 
we hit from the blind spots where they least expect it. Now there's commotion from within. And all I can say to evidence, Chad, is soldier own boy, soldier own boy. And the advice that I can give to Charlie at this particular moment in time is in this life, my brother, it's a fight for territory. If you stop fighting for what you want, everything that you don't want will automatically come to you. Makandewa has secured his life for the next 20, 30, even 100 years with the money that he has been stealing from people. This is an opportunity for you, my boy, to make a big move. And this, the big move that you will make, and you must make sure that you secure the bag. You secure the bag. At this moment, you are one of the most priceless asset in this prophetic, uh, in this prophetic industry, and your value will be determined by your next move. I know you'll be tempted to keep on endorsing Makandiwa, to keep on. If you can even go to him, he will allow you to come inside, take pictures with him, post him. No, my father, I will never leave him. You might not leave him, but he has left you. What he's doing now is just managing you. He is just managing you because you are a loose cannon. What he does not want to do, what he cannot risk, is to have you starting to expose him because you know too much. Father, if you are watching me from South Africa, I think you know these people too well. But as time goes on, I'm going to be really digging deeper into the South Africa people and what goes on there. And you're going to be seeing videos like that. Just that the Nigerian audience following me may not really understand, but it's all about the same principle. So this video is all about the whole act or what I say, the art. Is that act or art of prophecy? And then J. Israel goes further, which I'm going to play the video to you, to discuss about the whole idea of um, Facebook prophecy, or would I say, you know, informed prophecy. So now, this is a gentleman who uses Facebook. Whenever he gets an invite, from anybody whenever he gets an invite what he does he visits the Facebook page of that church that is inviting him then he goes through the comments he checks even the likes who is liking the post he checks you know you know after a poster is released in every church the members will be called oh I'm coming oh I'll be there oh I'll be there okay just leave it there I'll be there I'm coming I'm coming so what evidence Charlie does he now goes on people's Facebook and when he goes on people's Facebooks, uh, he uses that Facebook information to prophesy to people. I'll prove it as we go. So now what you are looking at on the screen, there is evidence, Chari. And if you look at the two videos that are showing there, although I was not able to retrieve the actual videos, I'm going to retrieve them uh, from my Google Drive. As soon as I retrieve them from my Google Drive, I'm going to bring them on this platform. But the, if you look, there's a gentleman who has got a white collar, something, uh, I don't know what they call it, in but you can see, and the video that is under, that is showing the grass, that was the rehearsal before the service. They were rehearsing the miracle. And then the one you see up there where there's a gentleman who's wearing glasses is where now the actual prayer was being done in the church. But I'm just going to give you a, a brief explanation. As you can see, he's busy prophesying to a gentleman who's wearing white. Now, the two guys that he's busy prophesying to, these are guys that he met before service. They picked him up. They helped to pick him up from the airport, and they brought him to church. When he is now in the church, he's prophesying to the same people. And now watch this. The same people that he's prophesying to, they are there on the Facebook page of the men of God who invited him to come and preach in Zambia. The kind of prophecy that evidence gives he only comes to give small, small prophecies and that are, you can see this is Facebook information. He can't mention anything else that is outside Facebook accurately because the only information he has is Facebook based. Now show us the Facebook uh, information of this. Now look at that. The first guy that he, he, the first guy that he prophesied, he said your name is Kezi. Now in Zambia, I don't know if there is a name called Kezi. I'm sure it is a, it is a, like myself, my name is Jacob, but you call me Jay. So when you are a true prophet, you cannot be a true prophet and come to me and tell me that your name is Jay. You will tell me that your name is Jacob. So I don't know that Kezi, whether it's the full name or what, but he mentioned the exact name that is on the Facebook of the gentleman. If you go to the uh, account of the gentleman, you can see 
it says married to Lydia Kumwenda. And he mentions the name of the wife again in the prophecy. He says, who is Lydia? Okay, Kebak, please just bring the video again and start it again. You see, Lydia is on Facebook. Kezi, that's the name that is on Facebook. Anything else that is not on Facebook, Evidence Chari, is not able to talk about it. As long as it is not on Facebook, he cannot talk about it. Play the Zambian video once again. Now I want you to watch here very closely. Things that you are trying to know. Watch very closely. You can mute my mic a bit. Your business is to carry power. Lack of power is the reason why I've got so many questions. When power is present, you don't have questions because what bothers you, you correct it. God will put you into serious agriculture. God will, God will anoint you. And okay. Are you, you watching have this? Dominance over land. There's Kezi. Ha! Keep watching. Then he prays for other people just acting like he's, you know, hearing from God. It's, it's just the tricks. Is she married? Where's the wife? In the spirit, you are wearing white. It's a uniform. You are a nurse. You are a nurse. You can put your hands together for Jesus. Ah, you Listen can closely. Jesus. Listen. You can do better. You can do better. There is a curse. There is a curse of your generation that is broken on you. Amen. You have given birth to a You have given birth to a new generation because of your prayers as an intercessor. Now, do you see that? You have served the, the deception of the age. age. Now, he I says you saying. are a nurse. Okay, back. There's a picture of the lady there wearing an, a nursing uniform. Please uh, just pause the video and put that picture on the on the screen. You see? Now, that's the nurse that he's talking. The, oh my goodness the wife of so what he did basically he went on the profile of the guy who was driving them from the airport and his name is Kezi and then the guy called Kezi is married to this woman called Lydia and Lydia is a nurse and everything is on Facebook <laughs> bring me back on the screen <laughs> are you are you watching this? Okay. The <laughs> Oh my god. This is this is this is something else. Now watch this. He comes and he says That, that's the only information that you can prophesy about. And then after that, you can collect money and go. And all this is on Facebook. Now show us the picture of the... Show us the pictures of evidence together with the driver and also the other gentleman. You see the other gentleman that he prophesied? Show us... Now just uh, slide all the pictures, back. 
just slide all the pictures from the time evidence arrived in Zambia up until they arrived in church. Slide the pictures. Now that's evidence arriving in Zambia. As you can see, continue. Together with the host pastor. Okay, continue. Now that is um, evidence arriving at the airport. Let's go. Uh huh. Now that is the host pastor, Apostle C. B. C. Mutale. Zambia, watch out for this fake prophet. Birds of the same feather flock together. Birds of the same feather flock together. You cannot be friends with a fake prophet and not be a fake prophet. They are the same and there is no difference between the two of them. If you are in Zambia, watch out for this BC Mutale fake prophet. We invited another fake prophet called Evidence so that they can come and lie to the people in the nation of Zambia. Let's go. Now, you see that message. Now, this is information I'm receiving from Zambia. I'm here and I'm receiving information from Zambia about what is happening. And this is a conference that they did beginning of April. And this was when I received this information beginning of April. And now today, before we close this particular episode, I'm doing this for the purposes of teaching you how these people scam people. There is more from yesterday where he had what he called a leaders and pastors meeting where the leaders were paying the equivalent of 200 rand to attend the conference and over 170 leaders attended it then in the evening he came back for the evening session and tomorrow he will be in lusaka for another minister's conference which will be 200 rand per minister okay let's go continue 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 right now that is him that is evidence together with the two guys who are in the circles. The guy in the arrow is Kezi. The Kezi guy that he prophesied to in church, that's the guy with the arrow. Continue. The Melissa Tasha Musanu is mentioning the guy he was prophesying to, Louis, and he said you are from Zimbabwe. There is the information. It is on Facebook. Continue. This was, the second, this was the second guy to receive prophecy. And his Facebook account clearly shows that he has got something to do with South Africa, which he came to mention. Okay? And these are people that, these are the same people who picked him up from the airport. That is prophesying to in church. Continue, get back. Now, that's the Lewis guy. The guy in white was the one driving him, and he was the first to receive prophecy, while the other guy was one of the protocol guy, and he was second to receive prophecy. The guy on the boot, you see the guy on the boot? The guy he prophesied to and say, I'm seeing something about South Africa, about what, 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 and he's acting like he's busy prophesying. There is the guy. And if you check the Facebook of that guy, his name is Louis Musanu, all the information that was prophesied about is there on, uh, on Facebook. Continue. All right. Now, do you see? Do you see that? If he was a genuine prophet, why did he prophesy only to people who picked him up from the airport? Because he heard that this one is Kezi. And then he went on Facebook. He heard the other one is Louis. He went on Facebook. He checked everything. Now he goes to, to church. I'm hearing Kezi, Kezi, Kezi. Kezi comes running. If you still believe in these fake prophets, if you still believe in these fake prophets, one thing I can tell you right now is that evidence is a fake prophet. And now what makes it even more confusing and where it confuses even the children of God is when evidence, Chari, begins to mix up with people like Mike Oropo. Bring the video where 
Evidence was preaching in Kenya together with Michael Oropo. Let's receive Prophet Evidence Chari. Fifteen minutes and we shut down. Please open your spirit and receive. Open your spirit and receive what from the big prophet? Now you see, pause, pause, pause. Give Jesus praise with. This is when the children of God gets confused. Because Mike Oropo, in fact, before we continue with this video, there's a short clip, that 30 seconds clip of Mike Oropo. Play it before we continue watching this one. Just play that one. You can never go far in this kingdom if you don't have something you are doing with your hands. That idea of telling you, just give and you will prosper, is a scam. Everybody prospering in this kingdom is doing something. When you have nothing to do, you make it difficult for God to bless you. It becomes easy for God to bless you when you have something to do. There is no spirit that can prosper a man who is doing nothing. We have... Okay. Now, this is where the children of God gets confused. Because how does a man like Mike Oropo, who claims to be preaching the gospel, you can hear him, he's talking about the prosperity gospel in Nigeria. He talks about prosperity gospel in Nigeria. He goes to Kenya, he preaches together with a, with a prosperity preacher. He preaches together with a fake prophet who's coming to fake prophecies right in front of Mike Oropo. Okay, continue playing the video, okay, back. We need to pray and avoid the situation that your mother went through. Because, where's your mother? She died. Is the mic working? I've been taken in the realms of the spirit in the past. Where okay, pause. I saw how you were born. We need to pray to avoid what your mother went through. Where is your mother? If you're a prophet, are you not supposed to see that my mother died? Continue. I saw the complications that your mother went through. I don't know if this information is available to you that you were born before nine months. You came earlier than they expected. Reason why I'm talking about that is we have to avoid Pause. that situation. Pause. On the now, if you look at the lady being prophesied to, her hands are shaking, and many people will be confused. How do you say that they are fake prophets, but the hand is shaking? One thing you must know: there are emotions. All these people in this church have already been worked on. Their emotions have been worked on and everything has been worked on. So by the time this gentleman is coming to, pre to, to, to tell them whatever nonsense is about to tell them, their spirits are already receptive. She's not shaking because evidence is anointed. She's just shaking because she doesn't know what evidence is going to say in front of the people. And all these people have been made to believe that evidence is a true prophet who came together with a man who preaches the word called Michael Oropo. So already they are ready to receive whatever they... Now because of our African brothers and sisters, the way they are, some of them will even fall and they will not know why they are falling. It's just emotions that have been worked on for the purposes and for the benefit of whatever that they are trying to push there together with Michael Oropo. It's a question that I have for Apostle Michael Oropo. How do you mix together with a fake prophet that means if you failed to discern the fakeness of this gentleman how then are you going to assist the body of christ in discerning against wolves in sheep clothing how are you going to be able to warn the church and stand as a watchman that you claim to be, Apostle Michael Oropo. I'm very disappointed in you as an apostle, as a pastor who claims to be standing for the truth, who claims to be standing for the church, and who claims to be standing for the gospel. You are a reproach to the kingdom of God, to the body of Christ, and the entire church at large. There is Michael Oropo together with evidence they were preaching together in Kenya. Is it because you want a connection with Makandiwa?
You can bring me on the screen. Is it because, Michael Oropo, you want a connection with Makandiwa, who is also a false teacher? Now, the Bible says, beware of false prophets. But at the end of the day, when the Bible is done speaking about false prophets, it goes on to say, beware of false teachers. Now, why should a true preacher, I was seen with Mothala, and I came out in the public, I explained to people why I joined forces with Mothala, who is a fake prophet. Michael Oropo must also explain to the people why did he also join forces together with a fake prophet from Zimbabwe by the name of Evidence Chari, who uses Facebook, even in Kenya, I bet you right now, when watching all these prophecies of evidence that I saw in Kenya, that is Facebook at work. Jay Israel is someone that, even though I have so much respect for him, most of his um, the things he talks about is also mixed with lies. So when I look at him, I look at him with a pinch of uh, you know, like with a pinch of salt because um, it's not everything he says that I take hook, line, and sinker. But what with this particular one, it makes sense. Why it makes sense is because he's an insider. Remember, I always tell you something about the insider factor. So we talked about Apostle Justin Suleiman here exposing all these um, scandals and all that. It was an insider that brought the information. So the same thing applies to Evidence Chari and someone that is an insider that got to release this information to him, which he already knew because they have worked together before. If it doesn't make sense to you, I don't know. Nothing can ever make sense to you right here on the platform because these are things that are clear with facts. Because it's either those people themselves that were being prophesied to. And the funny thing is that if you look at the video, come on, when did Af the African church get to this point? You see, even the, the whole Kezi guy or something was removing, was he removing his handkerchief to touch his leg or was he removing money to put on his leg? And these are things that, these are things that happen in churches to a great extent. The next thing you, I made a video about uh, Moshala himself raising an altar in his church i think it's on my backup channel so i will link the video right here in the pin comment so you see what happens in church last time i also watched apostle johnson suleiman raising an altar in his church also as well in his holy ghost conference recently that he invited prophet isa and it was just interesting so these are things that happen in churches but i don't know you people that are the viewers i ask you people questions do you have a, a scriptural justification for these things that you do or because or is it because it's someone that is quote and unquote a man of god that is doing them that you just do and then you just do things sheepishly you understand because right here if you looked at the video i just showed you and the way j israel explained it it makes sense how come it's just those people that went there to I did, let, let me assume those people do not know that means he could just ask their names here and there, search information about them, search who is your friend, who is your friend, who are they connected to, get the information, go there and then do the prophecy. And if they know themselves, that means they must be very, very good actors for them to come and act those things out. And you see, one thing that happens in these ministries most times is that when a prophet is doing, quote and unquote, prophet is doing these things, they do more of like gimmicks. They have actors that would act like these things are real, manipulating the other gullible ones that don't know nothing for them to also key into that because they are seeing people whom they think are really having an experience with this person falling under whatever anointing or maybe, you know, being prophesied to if, if, if it's arranged. And then they will now start putting in their money and start believing that person because they can see evidently that this is happening live. I don't know if you understand. But looking at what was happening there at the altar, them dropping money at his feet, trying to touch his feet, I'm just asking myself a question. When did Africa get to this point? So it has to, it has to take an insider. Now, J. Israel himself has been in this thing for a long time. Even though right now he's saying he has repented, kini kiniko. I don't see it like that. It's, it's more of like, um, you know, it's more of like he's still in that... Uh, uh he has not fully given up those tactics because i see it in his words he says something today i watch him tomorrow he's saying a different thing you know a kind of thing so i i follow him closely with with his utterances because if you watch me myself as a person the things i make commentaries about do i bring them from the moon that here on social media and i make commentaries about them so the same thing but remember like i always tell you relevance by association which is what is going to take us to the next discussion right now about apostle Michael Oropo. Now, 
Now, of course, like I introduced him at the beginning of this video, very much respect Lord, respected Lord by many people. Even one of his videos went viral on Facebook when he was preaching against the whole prosperity gospel and all that. You know, when it comes to this, if I want to really, I'm not trying to, I've never labeled anyone right here on the platform, okay? I discuss it objectively. It's now left for you to decide who you call a man of God or whatever, who you follow. I don't I don't care what you think. But if you think me discussing about these people is bringing them down, then I, I think your level of Oboradi uh, is too much. You understand? But looking at, Pastor, Apostle, looking at Apostle Michael Oropo, last time when I discussed him in this video, I talked about the whole fact of how these people preach themselves and all that. And it's actually one of them, which I think, of course, to a great extent when it comes to the Pentecostal movement or would I say ministry is more of like a way of honor you understand you know when you talk about other quote and unquote relevant well-known well-respected men of God so most times when their audience get to see you they find you worth listening to why because you appreciate their little God I use the word little God because I've made a video right here that people are still don't understand about the concept of little gods. <laughs> you understand? So when we look at that, I begin to understand why many people, when I make videos like this and discuss these things, they come in the comments and then they are just running back. So this is where um, the words of uh, Apostle Ero Mosai, where I think he made this video, I think two years ago or something, if I'm not mistaken, where he talks about this whole idea of... Uh, you know having the discerning spirit and when it comes to those you share your pulpit with so if you're watching this uh, apostle michael oropo or those who are lovers of apostle oropo listen to what a rom osai had to say i'm saying is i've checked and i've heard the whispers of the enemy and the plans he has concerning my life so i've also made plans if it's only the devil <laughs> for many of us it's only the devil that is planning because you are oblivious of the plans of darkness. I have made plans also, and in keeping with my plans, the invitations I'm going to accept in 2022 are only from genuine men of God. Men that if I go before God, God says, yes, my son. Then I'm willing to respond to those invitations because I have received intelligence about the intention of the kingdom of darkness. Do you understand it? Part of the reason why God raised us as a ministry to raise the standards, to establish a plumb, a pl an apostolic plumb line. The body of Christ, we have wizards as pastors. We have former practitioners of divination and on, with suit on the pulpit trying to speak English. We have evil men saying Jesus. And they will not leave the name of Jesus. Do you understand that? So God, the, the cure to it is that God will raise original people that have not bowed themselves to the God of the age, the God of mammon, the God of performance, the God of lies. People that are in active service with the Lord. And when you see them, you will know the difference. Are you with me? And so the devil will fight to corrupt that possibility. Just like the kingdom of darkness wanted John the Baptist out of the way because he was the only one that, that stood for the truth. His voice was not bought. If you don't know what Satan wants to achieve around your life, you will play into his arena. So the first thing that God raises a watchman to discern is to know the plans of the kingdom of what? So every year I seek intelligence. Are you with me? If, you are, if your God is invitation, you will fall. If your God is money, if your God is fame, you have fallen already. If your God is popularity, you, can, you cannot be quiet. You can't operate from the background. You must say, I'm on television. Ah. They will invite you. BBC will invite you. And that invitation will be the end of you. So part of the reasons why you need to receive intelligence is so that you can build your own siege against the siege of the devil. Please help me tell your neighbor. Don't let not Satan be the only one planning. You have to plan also. <laughs> and I tell you by the special mercy of God, we will disappoint Satan again in 2022. I have received mercy from him. 
Watch it. Now, I don't know if what he said These makes sense to you, okay? That is why when I talk, when I tell you things about the relevance by association, you have to be understanding certain things right here on the platform. You understand? When the Bible itself talks about you cannot be hot and cold at the same time or something, you have to be either hot or cold. You know, you know bad company itself corrupts good manners like we know normally. You understand? So from your associations, it, people can easily get to psychoanalyze you or understand the kind of person you are. Is Michael Oropo here a false prophet or a false teacher? Of course, come on, look at someone. Someone has preaches good messages and all that, but in the same messages, you get to see some more of like, you know, preaching themselves and preaching loyalty and just like you see in many of these churches and all. And I, when I hear these things, I'm more of like, okay, people will now say, George, you are looking for fault in these people. I'm like, no, I'm not looking for fault. I just look for the dominant things I see that is being, uh, how am I going to put it, being taking dominance over the message of Christ. And I try to address those things. I don't just intentionally, because if you think that George is looking for fault, let me ask you a question. When these things are being shared by the pastors on the pulpit and they're preaching this to people, are they being preached as truth or as false? But your problem is that when I beam light, on certain areas of the things they say, you see it as a fault. I don't even say it's a fault. You are the one that come in the comments and say it's a fault. But when you watch the videos right here on social media from beginning to the end, you don't see any fault. You don't see anything wrong with it. Everything is okay. Whoa, so far as it's your papa that is preaching, you're already in the spirit. What point am I trying to make right here? When you listen to these people when they preach and say things on social media and you get to consume it all over the world, do you take their word for it hook, line, and sinker, or do you go back to search your scriptures if these things themselves make sense? But the thing is that I, I bet you would not really want to say you are going back to your scriptures. Why? Because you already believe this person. So whatever is coming from your man of God is the truth. But ask yourself a question. Why would Paul be having a disagreement with Peter in the Bible when it comes to because even the apostles themselves were saying that, you know, Paul himself was preaching some hard truths that they don't understand. Why would they be having those disagreements? So nothing is new under the sun when you see, sometimes you see pastors call each other out from their pulpits and all that. It happened in the Bible. Certain things like this, conversations like this need to happen so that you yourself, who are the viewers, we ourselves, who are more of like the followers, get to have a right understanding about these things that are happening in church. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So looking at the... The, the, the entire concept of this video, what have you been able to learn? There are some prophecies that are fake, deep fake prophecies to a great extent that are just out of informed um, 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 notions about people and then they're able to project this in the name of prophecy. That is one thing you have to get from this. Number two is, as you're watching your pastor and whoever, wh whatever they do, look at the associations because the associations to a great extent can bring them down or give them a bad PR. So if you're watching me and you're a pastor and you are sharing a mic with someone that doubles into the occult or something like Eero Mosai was saying in the same video I played or something or that is into some shady whatever, you have to need to have a discerning spirit for you to know invitations you honor, those you preach on their pulpits because when once you decide to associate yourself with some people, hey, Maybe those people are using you, the mixture of you, to keep their relevance as, as them being real. So how do you know the sheep from the wolf? I don't know if you understand, but the way social media itself is, one thing you have to know is that all of these pastors, they want one thing. That is attention. And where does attention come from? Relevance. Currency. 